Hey everyone, it's Mr. John from AK Dragonfish 3D. So, a few days ago, I took my nephew out fishing because he's been bothering me like hardcore. I want to go fishing Mr. John, I want to go fishing Mr. John. So I finally took him, just him and me. Uh, he had a really good experience, a really good time. Uh, we caught one. My sister, Vicky, uh, who homeschools, uh, had a wonderful idea that it would be great to bring a fish home and give a class to all the children about about you know my knowledge about fish no means a fish expert uh so there's your disclaimer i might get some terms wrong here and there the the children had a great time learning about fish little baby nessie turns out to be a fish pig she ate a lot of, she ate the whole fish i think i got two bites out of that whole fish uh that's that's really great in my opinion let's get to it hi annabelle okay so so to review again this is a trout is a cousin of the salmon, it's a in the salmonoid family. There are salmon, trout, and char, right? So you can tell, identify this as a trout by the roundness right here, and the spots, and the pink line that's right here. Now, in in our waters around here, you'll catch what's called a lake side silver salmon or a lake silver salmon, which will look similar to this, and that's why I make it a point to speak about the points in that line, okay? Because everything else will look the same. They have the same spots. They just don't have this this pink line right here. They have more of a silver look and whatnot, but they have the same general fins that help them navigate. Now, why I have paper towels is because salmon have a defense mechanism. What uh, is it? It is slime. Ew. Right? It, that's why I popped it in the head really hard the minute we pulled it out of the water. Because if it would have stayed out of the water, it would have stressed out. Like when everybody has a bad day, their defense mechanism is yell at each other and fight one on. <coughs> Trout's defense mechanism when he's all stressed it's out, slime. it's just create a lot of slime. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this clean this trout and pull his guts out. <laughs> yeah. We start with we start. So first thing we do is we cut his gills, right? We cut his gills. Pure and simple. Right? That's he's like he's already dead, you guys. He's already dead. He's been dead for an hour now, right? And then we start from the yeah, we start from this this uh, this interior fin here. I don't remember the name of the fin, right? And we go straight to the gills. You poke it in, and you're gonna hear shh, shh. Listen, it's just like our body. There's an air cavity. In it. I can't hear it very well because of the right. And that's the inside. Okay. All right. So we have its intestinal tract here. We'll, we'll try to pull most of its guts out. There. Because it's I'm not sure which one's its heart and which one's its liver, but all right. And then here's its intestinal tract, right? Here, and I'll try to lay it out, right? And try to lay it out like that. I kind of broke it apart, but yeah, pretty much. They have a tr fish have what I like to call a straight pipe. Like we eat, and it, our food comes down like this, and then goes hits here, hits our stomach, and then goes through our small intestine, and then goes through our large intestine, and then goes through our large intestine, right? No, fish, they eat it, it comes into their stomach, which is right here. And then just straight pipe out, out the back, okay? And I didn't get it all out. Okay, here's one right here for you. Okay, this was a female. That is an empty spawn sac. What's a spawn sac? Spawn sac is where they form all of their eggs. Now, we have two holes that things come out of at the bottom. Fish only have one, and everything pipes in that one hole, okay? The biggest thing which you always remove when cleaning a fish. I don't care what fish, I don't care if you're a fish expert or not. This is just pure and simple Mr. John Gross, mm -hmm. okay? Who knows what a kidney is? What's a kidney? What's a kidney do? A kidney is a filter for our blood, okay? That black line right there is the, is the fish's kidney. It runs from its lungs, right? Calm down, right? And there's a there's a, a, a film over the top of it, so all the blood filters through this kidney, okay? And it's it's right. Fish's gills are right there. 
Okay? So fish fish breathe by going like this. They do a gasping motion. That's why the fish are always opening and closing their mouth. So they the water set when they open their mouth, it sucks in. Brush name? Well they kind of need water to cross across their gills. Okay? So if I can get the gills out. The gills out without destroying them here. So you can see the good plate. We're cutting my finger. Very, <laughs> very. Aha! Success! I got it out without destroying it. I spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, so that's the gill plate, right? So it's, 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 your lungs kind of look like the same thing, they're just in a bag. What we're gonna do now, aside from wipe all this guts off, right, is when cleaning a fish, in my opinion, and this is how my daddy and my uncles taught me, right? You cut its gills at the bottom, cut its gills at the top. And you pull all the guts out, and we've done that. And then you take your thumb, and you go as low as you possibly can. You don't press down hard, because then you push into the meat. You just want to press until you feel the spine. It'll feel like, um, like a rigid chip, right? And once you find it, you just grab a fish, push forward. And the whole point of this is to not one push through the membrane of that's holding the kidney in place, and two to remove the kidney. And that black slime is the fish's kidney. Okay. Right. So now we have a perfectly clean. Now we would just rinse this off. And, and then you eat it. No, you cook it cooked. after it's cooked. Correct. Right. Wash it off and. Then we wash it off and eat it. Right? So there's that. That goes in the garbage. So that's part one. <laughs> yeah, that's part one. I'll throw that away. Rinse it off. It is just a matter of how you prepare it. So, so you would scrape the scales off. Right? Yeah. I didn't know you could just scrape them off. Mm -hmm. Scrape the scales off here. That's, now you can actually see the pink line better. Yep, you can see the pink line better. Right? <laughs> I don't always do this because it'll come off when you fry it, but for the sake of the demonstration purposes, right? Some fish have more scales than others, more prominent scales, like gray oh, have wow. very large scales. They're so pretty. Yeah, they're kind of silver. Yeah? What? Do we want to test the scales? No. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I don't want to. No? Okay. All right. All right. So we just. It's called descaling the fish. They actually make a really expensive tool that does the same thing. <laughs> I just use the back of the knife, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is called a a finesse fillet, right? I can easily just cut and rip, and just totally be, because of the size of the fish, I got to do a finesse fillet. If this was like a larger fish, like the fish was like this big, then yeah, I just rip and rip and strip, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut it right there. All right, I'm just gonna, okay? We could use a head for a treat for the dog. Yeah. With the head? <laughs> and what's called the collar. The collar is the part of, it's it's like your collar, right? It's like your collar. You have a collarbone right here, right? Right, it, it comes down right here, right? This is the collarbone of the fish right here, right? Now, Something that's really cool to do is you could take a bunch of fish heads and fish tails and fish bones, put them in a pot and bring it to a boil for hours. All of this will melt. Because the fish bone is, what's a bone made out of? Protein, collagen, stuff like that, right? So it'll just melt down into soft, pliable mush, and then you get a lot of protein from fish bones. For the sake of argument, we're gonna cut the fish. Okay? Right. Now we're gonna take the knife. Oh boy, this is not a very sharp knife. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel the ribs off from the inside. And that one sounds like she's about to die. <laughs> right? Oh, you're fine. And we're gonna peel the ribs off. Peel the ribs off, nice and easy. Right. Flip it over and do it again. Right. Again, completely opposite to that of just stabbing the neck, sticking the knife in, and ripping down the spine. We're still gonna rip down the spine, but we're kinda, because of the size of the fish, we give it a little more finesse. We give it a little more finesse, right? 
Okay, so we give it a little more finesse. Then we come back in. Listen. Listen. Hear that noise? Hear that crackling sound? Okay, that crackling sound is what's called the pin bones. So if you think about how the human body works, if you think about anatomy, everything kind of works the same, okay? Everything kind of works the same, okay? So what it is, 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 come here, Sam. Come here, Sam. Turn around. Arms up. Okay. And then hair out of the way. So we have our spine, major ribs that connect, but the, but the, in a fish, right here where the spine is, bend down a little bit, so everyone can see your spine. Where your spine is, you've got muscles. And fish have little tiny bones that run along the spine called pin bones. And some fish, they're more prominent than others, and they hold the muscle to, the purpose of the pin bone is to hold the muscle to, to the fish. Like they're, they're to an extra set of, like we are upright creatures, right? Right, we have. Well, they're, they're, they move like a snake, or I think snakes have pin bones too. I'm not 100% sure. That's something to Google. Yeah. But either case, right? There's pin bones. And I'll, once I get this, right? And there's one fillet. Right? And again, right? You can see. See, there's, there's you touch it. here. You can touch it because I'm watching all. Look, I missed a rib bone. Right there, Mr. Oh, wow, Ripley. that's so little. They are little. Anybody? Anybody want to? Yeah. That is crazy. That's oh, like, like a like... bone. Yeah, that's its rib. Ooh. That's its rib. That's that tiny little that thing is, is its rib. Yeah. Right? That's actually... I want to touch it. That's not that hard. Right? Okay, so, flip it over. Since this is a trout, not necessarily. All right, and then we go again. The same thing? The same thing, just on the other side, right? And there's the second fillet. And then we would just chuck that, or you could melt it down into collagen and whatnot. You could throw this in the oven for like 10 minutes if your dogs can process bones. Never feed a dog raw fish, period, end of story. How come? Always cook fish. Yeah, we can use it for The reason dogs. you cook it, you process it somehow, because fish have um, micro microparasites. Okay. Some fish have microparasites. I know uh, chum, a, a type of salmon chum, has microparasites in it. It has microparasites, and the, the parasites will get in the dog's intestine and... Essentially, yeah. fish version of tapeworms. Um, I recommend Googling that. I just know never feed a dog raw fish. The vet last year kind of really scolded me about never feed your dog raw fish. Because I didn't know if I could or couldn't. And so I called the vet and I was like, can I feed my dog raw trout? And they're like, nope. So, all right, now to continue preparation for cooking. Now we've got meat, right? Spine. If you, actually, if you, hold on. You're right, make a slice right here. If you run your finger right there, you can feel the pin bones. You've got to come around. Feel those little tiny, itty bitty bones? Soft. Okay. Now, if you take it down, let everyone move out of the way, right? Okay, right there. Run along, you feel the little tiny, itty bitty bones, right? So the joys about pin bones is when you cook them, the pin bones, pin bones turn into mush. Yeah. You will see little tiny itty bitty like, I mean they're like this long and they're practically see through hairs as you eat it. That's the pin bones melted down into nothing. Okay, so you got, so you got the major part of the meat and then you have the belly. Now survival scenario, I wouldn't be honest, I wouldn't have even cut it apart. I would have probably ran it through a stick and put it over the fire. But for the sake of argument, right, you want to cut the belly meat off because it just, it's a lot of fat, right? And when you cut the belly meat off, you also cut that bottom fin. Fins. Mr. John's opinion, Mr. John's opinion only. The fins are edible. They just do not <laughs> digest very well. 
So you want to take and cut all the fins off. That part doesn't have fins, but this part has fins. See, there's still fins, right? Fins are disgusting. They're not, they're not disgusting, bud. They just don't digest very well, so you cut them off, right? And then we could probably cook them up and make them a dog snack. All right, just cut the fins off. And there we go. A little bit of a rinse, and we're, we're ready for a frying pan. Yay. We're ready for some seasoning and frying pan. <laughs> okay. Let's go and wash them off. You want fish? You want trout? Yeah? Oh. Um, is it I, yummy? Is that yummy? You like the fried trout? The trout is good Ness. if I don't eat it every day. Ness, is that yummy? <laughs> Not bite? <laughs> oh, yeah. You should tell daddy. That's why I told her to get it on film. Because there's no way Wes would believe this. Yeah. He'd be like, is that good? <laughs> Ooh, you got a fish, kid. All right, last bite, okay? Last bite? Um, All gone. All gone. Bye -bye.